So this is some soap that I made in a recent video. We're going to cut it today. It's set about um, from Saturday at like 4 p.m. and now it's Monday at like 7 p.m. So you don't want to let it set any longer than that. 48 hours is really the max because this will harden to the point you can't cut it. Uh, you could still use it, but it would be really hard to use this whole block in the shower. So first what I do is you just kind of break it away from the silicone and that's pretty easy. And then you just kind of have to reach in and work it and get the whole thing out. And I'll just set it. I just use a towel to cover the workspace because if not, you'll have little soap chips everywhere and it's easier to get that off, shake it out of a towel than it is to like scrub it off the table. These can just go in the sink and you can wash them. So then you essentially just have two gigantic logs of soap. So I'm pretty pleased. Um, it's nice color. I do want to point out two things. Remember how we talked about alien brain and partial gel if you watch the other video? See on the end, well actually you can see it better right here. See how that's darker than it is on the edges? That's common, at least I've always experienced that, and that's like what's called partial gel. That makes no difference, it does not matter, it doesn't hurt your soap, it doesn't make it less usable, it's just what it is. It's the science, science behind it. Um, you can kind of see it on the sides, how it's lighter there than it is here. It just means the gel almost reached the edges, the gel phase where it heats up. And you notice that it's kind of... Um, this part is kind of prettier, so to speak, than that. This has a more kind of lustrous, better look. Um, and that will happen when you reach the gel phase. One more thing I want to mention is you notice kind of the texture on top. If you watched the other video, you've seen where I talked about alien brain. This actually happened a little bit with this. What that means is it got too hot. Once you put it in the mold, it will continue to heat up. Um, again, it doesn't ruin the soap. It doesn't hurt it. It gives it kind of an odd texture on top. Some people might like it. I think it's kind of weird, but it really doesn't matter. You're going to use this in the shower to wash yourself with, so it doesn't really matter what it looks like. You know, and for me, I just make it because it's better for your skin. It's fun to make, so that's no big deal. Those things don't bother me. I'm not trying to make this to have it be some kind of super artistic way. It's just really more to make for it to be usable. So, And really, with handmade, that's what it is. If you want perfection, you have yeah. a, you if have you a, want a perfection, factory or whatever right, to do it. Right. I always yeah. like to think of it as, you know, I have two hands. I'm a human, not a robot. So someone yeah. who's human can't, you know, make stuff that's 100% perfect. So, first thing I do, this is, I think, what I used to originally cut soap with. I'll be honest, I don't have no memory of where I got this. I want to say I got it at a thrift store. Um, I don't even think it is a soap cutter. I mean, I think you can get soap cutters like this. Um, I use this. You could use a knife. You could also just use a knife to cut this. Uh, you could also use a cheese cutter, but you see how the edges are right here? I just take it and clean them up. You don't have to press too hard. I mean, it's fairly soft. I just take it and clean it up. You can save that. You don't have to toss it. You could, like, put it in your laundry when you're washing your clothes. I just kind of shave it off and make it even so that when it goes in the coat, uh, soap cutter here, it don't get hung up on anything. All right, now, and see, you can see it kind of makes a mess, so it's good to have a towel down. So this soap cutter come from Bud's Woodshop. I got it off of Etsy a couple years ago. You can use just a knife or you can buy soap cutters like this. And all it is is this is like a... This isn't like uh, on an instrument. It is, this part is like would be on a guitar, so this may be a guitar string. And you just wind this until it gets kind of tight. So for me, I'll pluck it and listen to it, and then you know which way you're turning it. Like that, it's too low. I don't know, I just kind of turn it a couple times. And you'll know if it's not too, if it's not tight enough, because when we go to cut it through the soap, if this is really bending and hanging up, you know it's not tight enough. So, one more thing I'll mention about this soap cutter. I'll kind of try to turn around to where you can see. It has this part right here. This is what's going to decide how thick your soap is cut. Because there's space right here, and the bar is going to slide all the way up into here, and of course it's going to cut down that line. So I've got mine set at about being that big. The further you move this away, the bigger it will be. The closer you push it into this line, the smaller it will be. So you just kind of have to decide what you want. But then you just take it and slide it all the way up to the edge and then you just pull this thing down and cut. Um, and then it makes 
Sometimes I'll clean these edges off, but sometimes when it does that, I just fold it down because it's going to set and cure. You can see how soft it is. Like, you know, if I scratch scratch it with my fingernail, and, and that's the consistency you want because if you let it get much harder than this, it's not going to cut. It's going to be too hard. Um, one thing I noticed, though, was that the it didn't look like it was tight enough because it kind of, when I cut down, it kind of dragged through it, so we are going to tighten it. So we'll see about that. Sometimes I'll have like a wet paper towel here to get this because if you don't get all that that comes off, it'll just drag back through your soap. You know, and sometimes I'll just fold off the edges there and then you just set it on the table and keep on going. Um, this recipe will make, I think, about 35 bars, but it does depend on how big you're going to cut them. You know, if you cut them real big, it's not going to make as many. Cut them real small, might make more. Some people, I think, turn theirs will turn it over. I've never done that. I don't think it's that big of a deal. I've never had a problem with that. I mean, once they set for four weeks, it's kind of done all it's going to do, in my opinion. Some people say six weeks, but I don't wait that long. Um, now, I've been doing this for like years and never had a problem, so... I will say, if you if you think you want to do this, like, to sell, or even if you just want to do this to make for your family, invest in one of these, because it makes it so much easier. It's hard to do with a knife, because it's hard to get it exact, and then you'll end up with some wonky bars. And again, it doesn't matter that much, but you're just going to be putting them in the shower to use, but this just makes it easier and faster. But that color's gorgeous. Oh, yeah. seems, and it's just fun. It's like so satisfying for me to yeah, make something. Yeah, make something that your family uses. Yes. It's the same as... Yes, um, make something that my family can it's satisfying use. satisfying to, to make something your family can use, just like it's satisfying to grow a garden. Or yeah, satisfying to or uh, yeah, to cook whatever. even, or put up green beans and then get out a jar on a cold winter day and know that you planted them yeah. and harvested them and processed them. And, Put them up for your family. Satisfaction. Yeah. That's probably what I love, honestly, the most about this is just that my family can use it. But, two, it's just fun to, like, yeah. I always feel like a pull to do something that's creative. Yeah. To make something and then see how it turns out. Like, that never gets old, ever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting. The matter root gave it a pink the, color. You don't like the what you're calling alien brain, but it's funny. Some people like how you showed yeah. in the video how you could tap it and get it to. Yeah. So that's like some, some people, people would, would probably want like it that. to be. Yeah, I mean, I've seen some uh, handmade soaps that are really like almost like meringue tip, meringue yeah. tips on the top. Like they've really whipped it to where oh, it yeah. got like that. Yeah. And it's kind of uh, just to be pretty because as soon as you start using it, that that's texture gonna go goes away. away. Yeah. There's even like literally soap, like embellishments that you can buy to put on your soap. I think I've seen that before, like mm -hmm. little rhinestones or Rhinestones stuff. or like little things that look like peppermint or like chocolate yeah. pieces. Yeah. Um, I've never really fake berry stuff like that. I've never really got into that because but some people do. Yeah, yeah, I just want it to be plain and simple. But yeah. some people do. I will say, I mean, there there are this like is truly an art. Um, this, what I've done is not incredibly difficult, but there are people who make incredible designs with soap, and it's really hard because it involves separating the batch out into, like, separate batches, mm -hmm. and you have to do that very mm -hmm. fast to make it all work, so, I mean, this, there's people who make amazing stuff, but I'm kind of good with just this. And glove-wise, I've never wore a glove cutting it like this. Mm -hmm. I've never had a problem. As soon as that lye is mixed with the oils, before you ever even get it out of the pot, it's done what it's going to do. Um, I do think that some people say to wear gloves when you're cutting it. I never have. I've never had a problem. But if you feel even a little bit worried about it, just throw on a pair of gloves so you don't worry about it. But what's funny is if you don't wear gloves, after this, when you go to wash your hands, you don't actually... <laughs> If you put, yeah. don't have to put soap on your hands Sorry. because they're going to really get sudsy. I still do just to get it off, but it's kind of funny. When you wipe all this stuff down, it like gets real sudsy. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to show you guys an up close of this. I know I already said this, but see how easily that scratches with my fingernails like that? That's why you have to let it cure for four weeks. If you put this in the shower now, you could. It's not going to hurt you, but it would fall apart. As it, when it's sitting wet in there like that, it would last like three days. Because you see how soft that is. I mean, you can just... I could probably take it and break it in half. I won't. But that's why it's got to set for four to six weeks because then it will get really hard and it will last a long time.
So this is just wax paper. Uh, the only reason I do this is you want to kind of protect your floor because it'll be hard to get sticky soap off of it later. And you also don't want something like a towel because again the soap is sticky. Uh, it would stick to the towel too easy. So I just get off a big long sheet of it, whatever space you've got. And just lay it out like that. And then you've got plenty of space to space out the bars because you don't want them... I'll show you guys in a minute, but you don't want them stacked completely on, on top of each other because then the air can't get to them, and that's what's going to help them cure. Okay. So I just got a stack of this. I just carry it as, as many as I can at one time. And so when you lay it out, you can get them close. You know, if you're like me, you don't have tons of space. But just try not to let them touch just yet. So if you watched the last video, I talked about how you can mix the, especially if you're using a powdered colorant, in with the olive oil first. Because if not, you'll see some of this. This doesn't bother me, but this was just a clump of that color that didn't get dispersed. And you can kind of see it there. That's why it's real red. It doesn't matter. That's not going to hurt you. It's not going to hurt the soap. It's just purely aesthetic. I kind of think it's pretty that you got like this red swirl in the pink. But uh, if you don't want that, you will need to mix it in um, with just a little bit of olive oil. Because olive oil is just, you know, it's liquid. It'll mix easy. Um, you can do that. I think you could do that two ways. You could just go ahead and have that in there. Um before you pour in the lye or you could just put it in a tiny bit of olive oil and pour it in at trace i would probably do that but either way it'll turn out good So Matt and I are getting ready to spread out this compost and finish the rest of this little garden area. He's going to till it up. But you can see all these beautiful lettuces. This is actually lettuce that I planted last fall. I didn't necessarily plant it there and it didn't come up, but I guess over the winter with the rains and the, we've had some really torrential rains, the seed got dislodged and ended up in different places. So then this spring, it just come up on its own. So we're going to harvest it before Matt actually spreads out the compost and tills in and then we'll get ready to plant some squash and zucchini and maybe some pumpkins right here. Blue or red? Grape or orange? Grape or red? I don't care which one you want. I get the red one. You're right. It's like 10 degrees cooler right here than it is in the sun. Oh, that'll be gardening right here. <laughs> I don't think the plants would like it. You. Yeah. All right, I didn't want you to look at it. But it's Kenneth's story yeah, about, about the lizard, lizard. fishing. Yeah. What did he mean when he said 
Buster was about to shoot off a sideboard or something. What was it? It was a gun. I guess that it had two fuses. Didn't old-timey people call cartridges fuses? I mean, like bullets or what? Uh, yeah, I think so. And at one time, a gun was actually fired by a fuse way back in life. Some of the very first guns or walls was fired by a fuse. Mm. It's called a matchlock. Said Harold conked him in the head. Automatic. I were fishing with red worms for lizards. I didn't know that lizards would bite like that. Mm -hmm. I guess they eat worms, though. So. What was they doing to lizards? Fishing with them or eating them? Or selling them? Well, they were six and eight, so I don't think they was doing nothing. Probably just catching them, tying them loose. Just something to do, like fishing for doodle bugs. Mm -hmm. Get way back up the creek where there's not much, well, probably other places too, but the only place I've seen them. You can just see some really big lizards. Yeah. Salamanders, people, I guess is the correct name, but lizards, spring lizards we call them. But. Mm -hmm. There used to be an old spring over at I used to fish over there. It was right beside the road. It's that road, you know, the barn we got in during that storm? It's yeah. back down below that. Oh. There's a foot log there. You can cross the creek. I don't remember what that was for, but they were, there may have been a home place there at one time, but there was a spring right in the edge of the creek against the bank where the bank turned up and there's a piece of tin that covered it up. And it always had big lizards in it. And every time I fish through there, I always take the rock off that piece of tin, lift the tin up and look at the lizards. I never did bother them or anything. I just looked at them, see if they was there, and then I'd cover them back up. Hmm. is a beautiful place. It sure is. Oops. Would you like to live and garden that place? Oh my goodness. It would have been nice, wouldn't it? Hmm. But yeah. it had been horrible to get run off of it. Yeah. It would have been hard. Um, as you can see why, what, Ar Arley, was that his name? The wild man? Remember Susie Phillips' relative? Yeah. You can so. see why he chose that to roam around. It's so beautiful. Yeah, it's pretty as it can be. Mm-hmm. You go back there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was a fun day. That was beautiful when it did rain and we hid out in the top of that barn. That was, that was a lot of fun. Camp lots and lots and lots of nice over. Caught lots of fish.
is my favorite rose you can see blooming here. Smells so good. I wish I could let you smell it too. It came from my Granny Gazzy's, so I always think of it as Granny Gazzy's rose. It's not one of the roses that'll continue to bloom all summer. It's one of those old-fashioned ones that blooms in the spring, and then it's over until the next spring comes. So it's just about finished blooming, but I look forward to it every year, and every time I see the beautiful blank pink blooms on it. I think of Granny Gazzy and how much I loved her and I think she'd be happy to know that I still had one of her roses, a piece of her roses, a cutting of it, still growing all these years later.